The uh, Special Investigation Committee set up by President Julius Madabio to probe the August 10th protests in Freetown and other parts of the country on Thursday, 13th April 2023, released their findings and presented to President Bio. Now, the committee's findings were that though there were, well, incessant complaints of youth unemployment and marginalization, substance abuse, economic hardship and food insecurity, these were not a justification for the level of violence perpetrated in the country. However, the findings also revealed that the demonstrations were politically motivated, well-planned, organized and executed in a coordinated manner. So this morning, to look at the findings and recommendations, we have Femi Claudio School, leader and chair of Unity Party. We also have Victor Idris Alansana, vice chair, Human Rights Commission, Sierra Leone. Good morning, lady and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Uh, from a political party perspective, uh, how has Unity Party um, digested the findings? And, and when you respond to that, piggyback as well on how the whole investigation committee was set up onto the point of the findings. Wow, loaded. Um, let's start with the actual composition. I think that the composition of the committee itself was maybe flawed is a strong word, but there were so many questions raised with regards to its composition. The committee consisted of, I believe there were 15 people, heads of various institutions, retired police, army, and the like. And some of those on the committee had already stated very clearly their position. And they had already drawn their conclusions. So one would have questioned their objectivity in their inclusion into that committee. Then I have read the um, report. I think I've done so twice. I did so again this morning to refresh myself. And the, the, the report in its entirety, I think they have done a gross injustice to monies spent and to time spent. The report, and even I was invited to that committee, and my experience on that day told me that there were preconceived ideas. And we were merely being invited to these committees to confirm their preconceived ideas and notions. They already had the script, and I guess we were supposed to simply write the accompanying music, um, which was not very successful, at least from my own part. And even after my visit with the committee, I, I, I did a Facebook Live where I actually said, the committee just wants to write the lyrics. To the, to the music set already by His, His Excellency. And looking at the report now in its completion, the report answers very few questions. It barely investigated. It made a lot of innuendos. It is full of falsehoods. And when I look at the composition of the committee, I am shocked that it could have been crammed with, with so many misleading and rabbit holes. The let, committee let, kept going down rabbit let me holes. Take you, let me take you quickly, Femi. I know um, we, we've, we've had conversations um, when the committee was set up. We've had conversations about the composition. And um, those concerns are still there. Yes. But because of time, let's go to the specifics in the report. I mean, when you talk about falsehood, is it because Femi Claudia Skoll is named as one of those who found the flame? Um, you're referring to, you're accused of um, putting out a tweet accusing um, Mother Bio and his Mende boys. Mm -hmm. I mean, but the report is saying that. Yes. So, so let's allow you to speak to so that. You're let's, one of let, those. Let's, let's for, and when I, when, the reason why I will go back to the composition is right. because there's somebody on that committee who's mm -hmm. from the IMC. Mm. And I believe even the chair right. has a relationship 
with the IMC, the Independent Media Commission. As the chairman of the Complaints Committee of the Exactly. Mm. And right there in Annex L, I believe it is, mm. is the tweet supposedly from Femi Claudia's goal. Right. Now, if it is a committee set up to investigate, mm. the, co the committee must have the ability to fact check. Anything that should enter into that report should have been fact checked. That tweet, and I have a lot of people who follow me, and some of them are actually saying, Miss Gloria Skoll, we have all your tweets. That tweet was taken out, a portion of the tweet, and then it was doctored. And the moment it was done, on the 21st or 20th of August... Do you want me... Let me just go through the tweets quickly, Femi. Please do. Um, you mentioned, um, well, you are accused of, being, uh, of saying that please don't sit idly. Call your members of parliament, Congress representatives, senators, ICC and political leaders in the diaspora. Madabu and his Mende boys are currently engaged in ethnic cleansing all over the Northwest. They are killing innocent opposition members. I mean, that's just an extract. That's the po the, and the extract that you have read mm. was what was d added to my tweet that was doctored. Right. And the moment it was done, I put out a disclaimer and I circled the portion mm -hmm. and I said, do not put words in my mouth. These are not my words. Mm. And if you look closely at the tweet, yeah. if you go back to Twitter, you can see the tweet is still there. Right. And it does not contain those two last paragraphs. So what you tweeted was death squads that carried out arbitrary executions during the coffee period were added and controlled by a few powerful men. They must also be placed on the most wanted list. The footage will prove their culpability. Is that what you tweeted? That was my tweet. Right. And after my tweet, I always add, we don't gaze. Mm -hmm. And since that doctrine of my tweet, I now add no plus, no minus, mm. i.e., not add anything bien, no minus anything bien my tweet. Right. So I put that out in the public domain. And many people received that to mm -hmm. say what was added was false. And if you look closely at it, Samuel, mm -hmm. you would see the font is different. Right. The size of the font is different and the font itself is different. Right. So my shock or my disappointment is that somebody within the IMC could not fact check? If you are claiming that you picked up a tweet in social media, and the report mm -hmm. has a portion where it addresses media. Mm. False hate speech in the report. That is highlighted as one of the issues. Mm. So there is a report with 15 supposedly highly qualified individuals who could not fact check. You couldn't do fact checking. And that is not the only error. I would highlight that because that's the first one you approach. Right. Let us take a couple more that are in the report. There is one where they quote IST, Councillor Sheku. Mm -hmm. And it is, it, they actually say that leading up to the August 10, they failed to clarify that that statement was made in 2021. And it related to a budget hearing that was done at council. And when they inserted it into their report, they did not put the context. And that is why I will always say this report has very little value. Mm. Because if it is loaded in untruths and falsehoods and misconceptions, because if you put the context that this man mm -hmm. said this in 2021 in relation to a budgetary council hearing, you have put his words into context. Continue to stay with us, Femi. Let's, Let's go to the human Victor. rights right. perspective. <laughs> uh, from the Human Rights Commission, Victor, uh, what are you deriving from the report? And thank you very much again for having the Human Rights Commission of Sierra Leone. You know, um, these are very serious issues. You follow that the um, Human Rights Commission put out a press statement when this incident happened way back um, in August of last year. Um, our, our concerns have always been very um, constant. We are very much um, concerned about the loss of lives. The report has shown very clearly um, that um, seven police officers lost their lives, 21 civilians also lost their lives. 
we are very concerned about the security situation, you know, that um, actually led to the August 10 incident. Um, several other issues, I mean, youth, youth unemployment that the report also brought out. Several other issues, I mean, economic, social, economic issues. So these are our concerns, and we want to really pay attention on the, the content or the, the, the body of the report. Mm. Um, that is what actually concerns us, because at the end of the day, we don't want such an ugly incident to occur again in this country. Because, I mean, we have said that um, we don't want to go to war anymore. We want to ensure that we dialogue. If there are issues, you know, people really feel ag uh, aggrieved about, come to the table and dialogue. Other than, I mean, taking the, the laws into your hands, other than, I mean, I mean, going all over the place to, to maim, to kill, and as the case may be. So we are very much concerned about the human rights issues that actually surround um, this report. Uh, we are not so much concerned about the procedural issues. Uh, those ones are really for um, either the courts or the politicians or people who have been named. Again, we, we are concerned about, um, um, since the report came out, um, we, we have had um, one or two people who we are named as um, persons of interest who said that we are not actually um, consulted or who are not brought before the committee to, to make their points. Mm -hmm. So that is for us also another issue that we are concerned about because um, there is a cardinal principle of law which uh, is expressed in the Latin language um, as all the ultra patent, which tells you or which means um, that uh, you have to hear the other side. Mm -hmm. And that is very cardinal. It has to be really, really looked into because um, this, 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 this is a, it's, it's a printable document. It lasts forever. And so if your name is mentioned, or if you are a person of interest, you must be brought before the committee for you to be heard. So these are our concerns, and we are really, really very much, con uh, I mean, very serious about them. And we, we hope that the um, government will be able to um, look at those concerns. And the, the, the recommendations that are, that are really stated in those reports, in that report, you know, are, are, I mean, are implemented. Because at the end of the day, we want to ensure that um, the security of this nation is really guaranteed. Government has the, the Constitutional obligation, when you look at section 5 of the Constitution, subsection 2, it's very clear that the welfare and security of, of the people of this country, of the state of this country, you know, is in the hands of government. And for that, it places burden on the civilian police, on the military, on public servants <laughs> to ensure that um, the security Victor, of the country when, is guaranteed at all times. When the incident occurred in August of um, 2022, um, you put out a statement like you've um, just <clears> mentioned. But was there any form of preliminary investigation to, to, to be able to position what the report is saying? Because now you're, you're looking forward um, to the implementation of the recommendations in this report. But effective implementation of these recommendations should have been informed by a factual process. So did you do any preliminary investigation to have um, gotten a better idea or fair idea of what really happened as a commission? Yeah, so, um, you know, the Human Rights Commission of Sierra Leone is known for um, ensuring that they get the facts before they put out any whether public uh, statements, uh, press releases, or a report. So right. every press release that you see we put out, we must give a brief background, mm. you know, stating the facts. Mm. So yes, that press statement actually talked about our, our preliminary investigations that we did. Mm. There is, the, there is a, the draft report to that effect. Yeah. And clearly, by the, as a matter of fact, um, the chairperson of the commission during that period, or that, during that um, on the 10th of um, August, mm -hmm. was actually in McKinney. We are having a public inquiry into the conduct of law enforcement officers. So the chairperson and our team were there. I was actually in Boo and my own team. We are looking at um, the, 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 the police and, I mean, other law enforcement officers. Mm -hmm. So they actually had to, 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 to warn for their lives. You know, the whole where the where, mm -hmm. where the investigations were going, uh, going on, you know, the public hearings were going on. You know, people actually went to their place. They, 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 I mean, they were almost, uh, I mean, uh, they, they were almost, if you like, I mean, mm -hmm. um, ran into, you know, so they had to really run to ensure that they, they, they were able to, to protect their lives. So we saw it. And during that period, they also did a crash, a kind of a um, criminal investigation. Mm -hmm. So we, we had real time um, investigations to see what happened. Uh, particularly so in McKinney, mm -hmm. and that's happened across the country because we have um, offices across, you know, in the uh, northwest, for instance, in, in, Pol in Poloko, we have an office there. They also did investigations here in Freetown. We have in the um, western area. It's, I mean, there's also an office there. They also did a report. Mm -hmm. So also, of course, the HQ here in Freetown, we also did um, a preliminary investigation. So. We have the real facts. I mean, uh, we, we, we... Is it in line with the, the, the reports that has been published by the committee set up by... Yeah, so, um, you know, the, the, the committee's report is elaborate, if you mm -hmm. like, put it that way. 
Um, but the fact, some of the fact, the fact that we actually alluded to in our report, you know, are uh, really, I mean, in concert with what they, they, they put out. For, for instance, I mean, there were loss of lives. There yeah. were destruction of property. Um, there were um, unwanted attitude, I mean, uh, I mean, behavior of, of, of Sierra Leoneans. We saw, everybody saw, AYV also uh, um, helped the country to see exactly mm -hmm. what was happening. So those footages cannot be de um, refuted at all. So we are concerned that um, um, government has to be very much serious in ensuring that those recommendations that are in that report are taken into consideration so that we can really, um, it's, it's no longer nipped to the board, but mm -hmm. it's to ensure that we, have, we take steps Stay to ensure that we, we address those issues. Let, let, let's quickly move over to our studio two where we have Imran Sila, one of the communication strategists at um, the Ministry of Information and Communications. Um, Imran, thank you for joining us um, this morning. And, um, unfortunately, we are unable to get a representative from the committee, but definitely we'll bring a, um, a representative from the committee to I mean, for that con conversation. But Imran, let me ask this question. Um, Femi claimed, for example, that the committee had a script already. Um, even before the formation of the committee or the setting up of the committee, Words in the report were already pronounced by uh, Imran, so other members of the government who are on record for saying that particular incident was financed, organized, executed, well planned by politicians, opposition politicians precisely. And um, these, are th these are words that are captured in the report that has just been published. Um, it's the, the allegation um, Femi is making, is there anything to go by that... Um, the government perhaps may have given a script to the committee. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity and good morning. Uh, you would also want to add Peter Conte, who was the interim chairman and leader of the APC at the time, right? right. I'm sure his interviews, right, should be in your archives somewhere. Right. Should be in the archives of, of SLBC 98.1. Even on AYV, where, we add him here. Well, exactly. Right. And uh, uh, his, his sentiments were not removed in any way from what uh, we saw happened, I mean, between the 8th to the 10th of August. So uh, that is just one more to add to a long list of those of us who were on radio and TV quite clearly stating exactly what we saw unfolding. And a a a again, we were told on, on uh, I mean, during that period that it was, it was against cost of living. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, the economic situation and the economic hardship. That was what we were made to believe. Uh, but my argument has always been, uh, Samuel, uh, the cost of living that affects uh, citizens of uh, Bombali district is the same that affects inhabitants of Kailaun district. It's the same for those in Cambia. It's the same for those in Falaba and Calabar. 80% uh, or 85% of this country was largely peaceful on that day, particularly mm. on the 10th of August. So it was quite clearly in places where uh, you, you would want to think uh, referred to as opposition stronghold, that was where uh, that, uh, those dastardly uh, acts unfolded on the 10th of August. So mm -hmm. you were talking about McKinney, where interestingly enough, uh, they are now on record uh, and have gone down as being the first district to actually shoot, mm -hmm. right, and kill a local unit commander in McKinney. It has to be, it has to be McKinney uh, for some reason. Or you'd want to talk about Potloko district. I mean, that's another opposition stronghold. Or the eastern part of Gita. Mm -hmm. So we quite clearly saw what unfolded on that day. And we have no reason to suggest otherwise. Mm -hmm. Quite clearly, right, what we said was confirmed and asserted to by the interim chairman, Peter Conte. And, 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 and I think that's the basis. But then let us go back again to the composition. Because I see somehow we're now talking about uh, the composition of the committee. Uh, some, of those, some of those individuals in that committee did not ask to be there. But just by the, the position that they hold mm -hmm. in the institutions that they represent, uh, they, they obviously had to be part of uh, the committee. So you want to talk about uh, uh, Interreligious Council, mm -hmm. Archbishop Edward T. Charles. It's because of his position. That's mm -hmm. why he got involved. Uh, Edinia Michael Aswalo, because of her position. Uh, Ahmed Said Nazgela, because of her position, uh, uh, because of his position. Mm -hmm. rather. And so, I mean, that was the composition of the committee. Yeah? And they had to go right across the country in areas where uh, 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 those uh, acts of violence and lawlessness occurred on the 10th, but, but also in other areas, because you, you, you also want to 
take on board the views of those places that was largely peaceful on that day. Why didn't they go out? If it was about cost of living, what were their views? And they clearly said, right, in no uncertain, ter uncertain terms that, yes, uh, we, we understand that uh, there are challenges to the economy, but that is not reason enough for us to be lawless mm. right, and reckless and, and, and try to overthrow a government. So when you see statements on social media uh, and people talking about uh, Madabi, where they go, they don't know where they go, people that don't begin their own, uh, it's not about cost of living. One other thing, again, I'd like to talk about is... Uh, well, just before we get to talk about that, you said overthrow government. Was this an attempt to overthrow those, those statements were all over social media. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't see them, but I'll bring them to you after the show if you'd probably like to see them for the very first time. Uh, it, it, is, it is all over social media. Social media was awash. Well, I'm asking from the government's perspective. Yeah. The social media content is one thing, but mm. the government's perspective is the official uh, 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 statement we go by. So I'm asking again, in your submission, you mentioned, you know, it's not enough reason to want to overthrow. So... Was this an attempt to overthrow the well, government? Well, quite clearly it was an attempt to overthrow, right? Because, <laughs> I mean, it could have been nothing else. I mean, if you, if you, if you want to protest against cost of living and somehow you, uh, you ended up having machetes and guns and knives, right? The, 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 the first individual uh, to be killed was a police officer in the east end of Freetown. That does not suggest it, it was about cost of living And that's part of the conclusion of the, of the committee, that it was an attempt to overthrow? Well, the, 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 the committee quite clearly said it had nothing to do. I mean, they found uh, those uh, assertions about cost of living has been on dodgy grounds. No, I'm still clearly. on the overthrow. Uh, is that from the findings or is it on your assumption? Well, Look, uh, I am going by what I saw on social media, what unfolded in front of my own eyes on that day. I was not at home, right, being told what was happening. I was out and about, and I'm sure this was one of the places I visited. I actually went as far as PZ and beyond, right, and we did see those machetes, we did mm. see those guns, we I'm did see those I'm asking you to be very clear, the because is, an attempt to overthrow is a very grave is a very grave crime. <laughs> it's it's treason. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so I, I'm absolutely. very deliberate on you know getting to understand the source of that submission in, you in, made in, about an overthrow. In, in the scheme of things, it was not about cost of living. It was not about the economic hardship because, like I have said, 85 percent of the country was largely peaceful. So, so and what we did see categorically, all of us, I'm sure if we followed it on that day and events leading up to the 10th of August, we did see people talking about the overthrow of a government, right? Mm. Those who were members of the APC, I mean, at the sub-national level, are uh, clearly participating in, 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 in that act. And um, they, they, they funded, brought people to Freetown, primarily for the purpose of, uh, well, they would call it demonstrations, but quite clearly, I mean, suggesting that uh, they wanted to overthrow, and so police stations were burnt in the process, right? So going in forward, all of those areas. So going forward, um, the people should expect that um, all those who, from findings of the investigations, are guilty of, you know, fueling or instigating, inciting mm. the August 10 demonstration could be charged with treason? Attempting to well, overthrow I, I the don't, government? I don't know where your nexus is coming from. I am stating exactly... It's coming from your submission no, 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 about no, 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 an no. attempt so, to overthrow. So, 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 you, so it comes back to mm -hmm, why I'm very mm -hmm. um, particular about getting to understand that submission further. Because to say an attempt to overthrow is mm -hmm. not just a, a, a minor statement. It, it, it carries grave, okay. grave uh, legal implications mm. as well. So again, it, it comes to that. So, so you are not only you are not just only trying to understand. You're making inferences, and so I would be the best person to make those inferences. So spare me that moment. You can make the inferences if that's what your own conclusions are. It is by it, it doesn't suggest. Iman, it was that your statement. My it my was point you is, who said an attempt so to so overthrow. These were not my words. You're These are your words. Now. Your, in, your inferences. And I'm trying to understand the source of that is, statement you made. It, did you make it as an individual so or is it based on the committee's feedback? I, is I it just, from the finding? Can I just get back to my point? And yes, I'm just after and, and, you and clarify to, where no, you, the there's, source there's nothing, of that there's statement. Nothing, there's nothing to clarify. 
I have said categorically, right, that I did see what, unfold, what unfolded on that day. I did see the events leading up to the 10th of August quite clearly. All of us, right, did see on social media, except if you're not part of social media, but we did see on social media people calling for the overthrow of the government. So right? your statement that is was quite only clearly from established. social media, not the findings of the it committee. It was quite clearly established. We did see arrests were made. We did see police stations were burned down. We did see machetes. We did see knives. We did see guns. We know for a fact that police officers were killed in the process. So does it now suggest to you if you are looking for inferences, does it now suggest to you that that was a protest against cost of living in an event where police stations were burnt, in an event where people carried knives, machetes, machetes and guns, in an event where police officers were killed? Does it suggest to you, if you are looking for inferences, does Imran, it suggest to you that to that interpret. was a protest against my cost of living? My work is to Let get clarifications just, and information. So, so we, need to, we, need to, we need to get the baseline and the basis right. That is all I'm asking for. So if I can transition very quickly to one more thing. So quickly, just before you transition. So the statement, the source of that statement is content on social media, not the committee's finding. Uh, if you want to fact check the things I have said, you're more than welcome to do so. Did you see knives on that day? Did you see machetes on that day? Did you see guns on that day? Were police officers killed on that day? Were police stations burnt on that day? Right? You can go fact check, fact check those. I'm more than happy to come back again at any given point Imran, let me after ask, you have done that let fact me ask this question. for us to have a conversation let around ask, that. Let me ask this question, Imran, yeah. quickly. Um, you, you, you said the cost of living, hardship, and all of that were not. But the committee is saying these were contributing factors. In fact, these were fertile grounds for the exploitation of politicians to have financed, executed, organized, and well planned. So, so is that? The, are you not taking that into consideration? So, so here's the point. Here's the point for me. Uh, fertile grounds for politicians. Yeah, uh, and I think that explains. Right, that's the caveat to what you're, what, what the, the question you've asked. Uh, I, 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 and, and it is precisely because of that that I keep saying mm. that 85% of the country was peaceful. Mm? So yes, there are challenges to, 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 to the economy. There are cost of living issues, right? Sierra Leone is not the only country faced with uh, uh, economic challenges right across the world. Yesterday I was on CNN after OIV on Sunday, watching uh, 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 what is happening in the UK, what is happening in the US, and the challenges they are facing to their economy. I mean, and we're going through hard and difficult times. Right? But be that as it may, government has made several interventions. My point is, if it was right, a, 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 a demonstration against cost of living, the whole country, right, every part, every single part of the country would be part of that exercise. No, that did not happen quite clearly. And I'm sure that was stated in the Let report. Me One more thing. I know, I, I know. I, I have to ask you this question, Iran. Yeah. You know, Femi talked about how um, they were called to appear before the committee mm. to make comments. But the, co the report also clearly stated mm. that not, not everybody was cooperative. So you have, for example, the report named the Deputy Minister of Internal Affairs, yeah. who's responsible for internal security, mm -hmm. who did not appear. I mean, who, uh, and the report is saying that is suggesting otherwise. So if um, he was called to give an account of his activities on that day and he did not show up with no, I mean, not even countenance in the committee, what, what, what is government making of that? And we, we've seen or heard nothing in terms of a statement from the government with regards to that particular decision. Was that not an, an affront to even the president? So I'm aware uh, uh, that uh, His Excellency the President has made very clear statements. Uh, on Thursday last week when he received uh, the report, he did say uh, that uh, he notes the concerns right, mm -hmm. raised by the report and the recommendations therein. Uh, I, I, I know for a fact that uh, he has spent time uh, going through the report page by page, word by word, sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph. And uh, that is obviously uh, uh, with a view to making sure that he understands the full context mm. of every single issue or issues raised by the report mm. and, and, and I'm sure uh, I cannot speak for and on behalf of the president in this instance right we're all uh, uh, appointed by him and and ultimately uh, he gets to take decisions on each and every single one of us and I, I look 
uh, I know the president to be very firm and decisive, and uh, ultimately, once he digests the full content of the All report, right. right, we we will hear. Stay out, stay out with us. Just very quickly, one more thing I would like to mention, mm. uh, and that has to do with uh, with uh, comments made that were also included in the report, yeah. uh, and somehow uh, we seem to be suggesting that because those comments were made uh, two years ago. Uh, somehow we should have been categorical or it bears no link to what happened on the 10th of August. Now, look, uh, it is on record, and that's also on social media, just in case uh, you might want to fact check again, uh, that Ivan uh, Akisoya uh, talked about Bua mm? That's on record, and that happened long before the 8th of the 10th of August. Samuel Kamara, too, is on record as talking about, uh, talking about Bua Bissier, right? Those events might have happened 6, 8, 12 months or two years before the 10th of August, but did it play a part? leading up to the 10th of August. And I think there's a crucial question All right. that anyone would want to ask. Stay out with us, Imran. But also, just before uh, um, we hear from you, Femi and, um, uh, and Victor, I would like to, to quickly put this out. You know, I'm getting a lot of um, WhatsApp messages with a flyer that um, AYV is sponsoring a presidential debate on the uh, Sailing Decides flagship program on the 22nd of April at the Beauty Money. Um, in fact, the, on the fly, it's conference, but so, so AYV will not do that. Um, that fly is not from AYV, and if you must know, AYV is part of uh, the National Presidential Co um, Debate Committee that would be organizing these debates. Already we've organized um, a national women's debates and youth debates. And when it's time for an announcement in terms of date for a presidential debate, we would come to you. That um, fly is not from us, please. Um, it's fake. And I'm um, carrying the photo of Dr. Samura Kamara and um, Dr. Julius Madabio. That flyer is not from AYV. Please um, just throw it away. Uh, Femi, let's come back to yeah. uh, you and the um, August 10. In leading up, Imran is saying some of those contents leading up to the August 10 incident uh, have a role to play in probably the mindset of people and how everything panned down. As a leader of a political party yourself, do you see how some of your actions, inactions, words, whether on mainstream media, on social media, or people you just interact with, can contribute towards instability in the country? Um, as opposition parties and members of political parties, we also have an obligation in governance. We may not be in government, but we have an obligation in the governance of Sierra Leone. And our obligation is to call things by their proper names, call excesses of the government out, point out in areas where things are being done that are harming the population, not helping our lives. But so, in the interest of public good, especially in a country where we have a lot of gullible people, where do you draw the line between calling the government out to maintain checks and balances and also creating that balance where you don't go about inciting the public? No, and an, in, a, an accusation of incitement is not very difficult to prove. A statement of fact that is an, uh, um, an idea or a concept that goes against what the government is saying, is the opposition doing its job. I give you an example. I am a person of interest, and so is Adi Macaulay. And what Adi was stating... So there's what you say, and there's how you say what you say. I give you a classic example, if I can finish. Um, when Adi was on your couch, and they were discussing the legality, the constitutionality of a protest. Mm -hmm. Should he not do that? As a lawyer, as a citizen of Sierra Leone, it is for not only Adi, but any one of us to read, understand, mm. and comment on the constitutionality of what is about to be done. Femi, are you conveniently and comfortably saying that um the opposition, when I say the opposition now, it, 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 it captures all the opposition parties. Mm -hmm. The opposition has not in any way played any part in inciting the public, in as much as it's still trying to put checks and balances in place okay. for the government. I want to redirect our focus, if you do not mind. No, let's not redirect the, no, yet. To Just the, respond to this to, and then we can I, redirect. And what I'm about to say impacts the report. 
it impacts the report. Because what you are saying now is somebody incited. And that was what led to the August 10. Am I getting you wrong? So if we focus on the report and what the report fails to do, it then directs you to answer your question quite clearly. It is apparent, for, just for clarification, that Imran has not read it. Because in the report, that inference is made clearly that it was a coup attempt. It is made in the report. But let me take you to where Imran is stating. I don't think they know what Imran is stating. But it says in the report, incessant complaints of youth unemployment, marginalization, economic hardship, food insecurities were not a justification for the level of violence. So uh, they are acknowledging that these issues were a factor. But my issue more with this report is the falsehoods. Now, I take you also, I was mid-sentence when you transferred over to him. I gave you the instance of my um, Twitter that was wrong. I've given you the instance where the context of ICT's remarks and not you're getting a report that will stand the test of time, as he says. So clarity is important. That statement was made in, in 2021 in a different, totally different context where it was appropriate. Unfortunately, secondly, we need to round up. Unfortunately, secondly, we need to round let me, up. There are two more issues. I think you've given Imran that didn't even know what was in the report <laughs> enough time where you will now not shortchange me. I, I've been here on time. Therefore, let us look at two other issues. One, you're talking, uh, he's talking about the Interreligious Council who was present. They are on the, on the, the in, Interreligious Council. The Archbishop was on the committee. But we see under Yvonne Akisoya's name, they claim that they did prayer and fasting on behalf of Adebayo. You hosted that team that came here that declared a week of prayer and fasting for the country. They were on your couch. I can send you the, 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 the video. How did the archbishop sit on the committee, see a falsehood being inserted into the report, and said nothing? And then we go back again to even what was said with, with, with uh, uh, um, Adi. So the report is full stuffed with inaccuracies. And even their conclusions are faulty. And this report must stand the test of time. And as we wrap up, yes. Victor, uh, what is the Human Rights Commission looking forward to uh, as the, for the August 10 uh, um, situation and the trend again we see going forward with even the disagreement over the, the, the committee itself? What is the Human Rights you know, Commission you know, it's interesting, looking but, um, forward to? You, you don't have to be surprised when um, you deal with politicians, okay? So normally you see a cherry picking thing being done. Okay, some part of the report will be accepted by a group well, and some other parts some other parts will not be accepted. It's so a the, question I mean, of it's, accuracy. It's not, it's not a surprise to us at all. Um, for us, the security of the state, actually, if the security is compromised, it affects all that the enjoyment of rights generally. So whether it's about education, whether it's right, right to life, properties, privacy, everything. So we want, to we want to see where governments will ensure that Section 5 of the Constitution is respected by ensuring that the, the security of the state is intact as we go into the elections. Already there are other threats now, you know, about uh, April 27. People are saying they will come out, they will destroy, they will do this. So we are calling on the intelligence units of, 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 of the Sierra Leone police to ensure that they do more. If you look at the report, it talks about clearly how the, the, there was a lack of um, um, uh, security coordination that um, these people were not actually up to task. You know, whether it's about resources, whether it's about going after the intelligence, and so on and so forth. So all of these are very serious problems. And if the security of the state is compromised, it means that you cannot come to work. It means that you cannot go to school. It means that you cannot actually engage in your political rallies, in your political um, um, programs. So people have to understand, again, political parties have to understand that Section 35 of the Constitution places obligation on them to ensure that they shape the thinking of Sierra Leoneans and not to do things that will be untoward, that will threaten the security of the state. So we are calling on everybody, this government, opposition members, to be very much respectful um, to one another. But, but just one quick one, please one. Please, um, on the issue of, um, you talked about the deputy minister. 
When I started uh, making my submissions, I talked about the cardinal principle of law that talks about hearing the other side. Mm -hmm. I have read a tweet or a Facebook uh, uh, a comment from um, Deputy Minister saying that he was never actually contacted. Call, call, he said yes. he was called on the day when he was, he was actually um, wanted to go and appear before the, the committee. committee. So to us, I mean, it actually defeats the, 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 the cardinal principle of um, hearing the other side. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to understand that... Um, Does that not validate um, Femi's claim? That's what? That the report is faulty. No, 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 no. So I've just said, I mean, it's a <laughs> cherry picking thing. Some, right. some, some part of the report will be accepted okay. by some people. Oh, and all oh, all oh, all oh, all unfortunately, we do not accept that. So, so, thank you very so much. Thank you very so much, much gentlemen and lady. Thank well, you. this is what would end today's edition of Wake Up Sierra Leone. Our quote um, for today says peace and justice are two sides of the same coin. And it comes from Dwight uh, Sienna, who was an American military officer and statesman who served as the 34th president of the United States from 1953 to 1961.